So hi everyone. My name is Yoshi, and I graduated Toyota Kosen 17 years ago. So almost 20 years uh, before 20 years, I was actually on your side. So I have a question that who actually uh, now who are the students at Toyota Kosen? Please raise your hand. Maybe half. So who is actually trying to go to Toyota Kosen? Maybe there's some oh, okay, something. I hope. Uh, my presentation will have some kind of insight for you guys. And so today, I want to tell you that uh, life at Toyota Kosen is actually very helpful for your life. And also, that experiences could change your life forever. And this is my story. I was born in Kiracho, which is very small countryside. And now it's called Nisio City, or a part of Nisio City. And somehow, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur when I was very young. So do you know what the entrepreneur means? Maybe not so many people. So entrepreneur means that the person who makes new business or who makes innovations. So as a junior high school student, I was thinking that if I just study for the college exam, that would be too boring. I would kill by myself. So I was actually Toyota Kosen was pretty much only one choice for me. So I just got, uh, I got into the Toyota Kosen. And even if I went to the Toyota Kosen, but actually I was very bad at math and physics. So it was the classes was kind of hell. So. There are so many good friends, and every time, uh, those friends look genius to me, actually. And at the class, the teachers gave us a small test at the end of the class, and I didn't understand any of them. So I just copied my friend's notes and just passed it that exam. So I was a very bad student. So actually, during the first and second grade, I studied pretty hard um, to keep up with the classes. And I will talk about a dormitory life. Life at the dormitory is very unique part, uniqueness of the Toyota Kosen. And I had so many good memories. But also, there was kind of tough thing too. I still remember that uh, when I come to Toyota Kosen today, I just, rem uh, it reminded me that um, very slowly, strange morning exercise. <laughs> <probably something. laughs> And I heard that because of the COVID, you don't have to do that right now. So I heard that it would be good for you. <laughs> and also that very crowded and quite smelly shower room and bathtub, which I hated. <laughs> but still, I have good memories. And also that uh, gender balance was not that good before <laughs> 20 years. But I heard that now it's getting better. And I hope everything is getting better now. And this is my first story about uh, my small invention. One day, one of my classmates was actually making something, very strange accessory, to put the cell phone. So this is the cell phone back in 2000. So there was no iPhone, and this only thing we could do with this cell phone was, of course, calling and sending that very short text message. And it gets 30 minutes to get to the uh, friend. <laughs> and the cell phone has the small antenna, which smartphone do, doesn't have. And the friend was putting that small LED light to the antenna. And with the some kind of effect, that actually flashes. If it, uh, if the phone get phone call, it was pretty, fun, uh, pretty funny to make that small accessories, and actually so many of our friends actually wanted to put that stuff on the on their cell phone. So we went to the uh, Old Street in our city and bought so many LEDs and made made hundreds of two hundreds and many of those stuff and just provided to our friends. So it was very tiny. It was very small invention and very small, simple stuff. But for us, it was 
quite uh, precious experiences to make something new. And I, we learned three things from these experiences. So first one was, what we learned at the Kosen is actually useful in the real world. So I was actually studying quite hard. So I was getting some A's, sometimes F's too. But anyway, I was not so bad. But still, I, had, I was not really sure that um, the things that we learn at school is actually useful in the real world or not. But this is a Faraday. There is a Faraday law, which I see only in the textbooks. But it, we can actually utilize those kind of things in the real world to make something new. So this, this was pretty big things for me. <laughs> the second thing was, um, I always wanted to be an entrepreneur, as I said. So I needed to be a good, good at inventing new things. But actually, I wasn't that kind of person. But the, my friend was very good at making something new. So you don't have to be a genius for everything. You can just collaborate with your friends. And third, maybe this one is the most important lesson from that experience, which is it's very fun to make something that makes somebody a little bit happy. So as you see, I had uh, so many good memories in the dormitory, but I have to tell you that uh, you have to be careful when you have too much fun, because <laughs> um, when I was in second grade, we were making so much, so much good memories and so many stuffs too. And also we had so much passion, not just for study, but also playing some kind of game at the dormitory. The game was unfortunately kind of illegal in the dormitory, <laughs> which is originally come from China, I guess. And we played with four friends. And one day after midnight, which when everyone should put their lights off and go to sleep. So we were doing that kind of stuff. So one day, one teacher came to the, my dormitory room with a flashlight in his hand, and we were pretty much uh, kind of arrested. So uh, we were totally kicked out of dormitory. So I had to take a train three hours in day, which was pretty painful. Then, since I, w I had to take a three hours train in a day, so I was thinking that if I, want to, I wanted to be an entrepreneur who works globally, I had to be good at speaking English fluently. So I just decided to go to the United States and go to the university at the United States. So I went to the student hall and get a paper which, which promotes foreign exchange. It was like AFS thing. And we got a scholarship from the Sony Foundation and went to the United States. So I was, my imagination was like this, but actually I was in this small, very small town in Alaska. So there was only 500 people living in this small town. In the next town, I had to take a car by one hour to get to the next village. So it's very uh, small place. And one of the people there are so many deers, boars, and also bears. So I had to bring some, some kind of like knife and sprays uh, to go to school. <laughs> but anyway, that was also a good experience. I didn't, um, it did, didn't give me a good experience to be an entrepreneur, but actually I became a good snowboarder. And also I was good at fishing too. And I was thinking, to go to the United, uh, University of the United States. But the, unfortunately, the state of Alaska didn't give me the certificate of graduation. That means I couldn't take an exam to go to the uh, college at the United States. Then I had to come back to uh, my hometown again and to take a three hours train to go to the Center. So then I was so disappointed. But someday, uh, sometime, suddenly, I noticed that I don't have to be in the United States or Tokyo or maybe Nagoya or a good big city to be an entrepreneur. 
I think as my friend who is actually making some small stuff at the dormitory room, I think I could find something where I was. So I started this strange business with my ex-roommates, which was also the grass from the dormitory. And this is a fishing net. So we buy fishing nets, which is old and kind of dirty. Then we clean up with friends. Then we sell it to the farmers at the mountains to avoid the attack from the bears and deer and boys. So this business was quite successful. And this, um, so this is the pictures that I was selling the, those ones at the mountains. And I also learned one lesson, important lesson from these experiences, that um, even if you are not so happy with your current situation or your environment right now, if you keep looking, there is something that you can really have passion with you. So this is my final part of my presentation. It's about what I do right now. I'm working with a company which promotes STEAM education for the junior high and high school students. So STEAM stands for science, tech, engineering, art, and math. So it's just like Torah Gosen. And also, I'm not good at all of these subjects. For the next year, all the junior high school students and high school students have to learn coding and computer science at the school. So it's going to be mandatory. But the problem is, they will learn, I would say, most of them will learn that coding with papers and pen, which sounds a little bit strange for me, for you, probably. And also, there are so many, not so many teachers are good at teaching coding at school either. So we invented um, software, which everyone can learn coding and other AI and that kind of stuff with, the, with their computers via internet. So that teacher do not really have to tell them. The reason I, we actually invented this one is deeply rooted to the experiences that I had at Toyota Kosen. Because in Toyota Kosen, the classes are quite practical. Because I am typing at the Nishizawa Sensei's class and also speaking English and computer sciences. And I believe that those experiences should spread it to the, all over Japan and hopefully to the other countries too. So that's why I'm doing my work right now. So this is the end of my story, but I hope um, the students at Toyota Kosen, or the people who wanted to go to Toyota Kosen will have the, a great life here in Kosen. And hopefully, you will find something you can really have passion and really fascinate you. And it be, you will be the really bright careers based on that experiences. So thank you so much, uh, thank you so much for my presentation.